that's my channel and let's start with the apologies firstly i'm sorry about the way i look it is well yesterday was the hottest day of the year so far and today is shaping up to be very similar so this is why i look like i'm melting because i bloody well am um, also, I'm sorry if you can hear the noise of the fan. The fan is behind the camera. I've tried to position it so that I'm still getting my old bit of benefit from it whilst not drowning my voice out. But I don't know if that's worked or not until I start the editing in a minute. So we shall find out. I have got for you today a small charity shop haul. So today is uh, the 26th, I believe. Yeah, 26th of June. Charity shops in the UK have always been closed for over three months for lockdown and were told that they could begin to open from June the 15th. I, in my excitement, thought they would all be open on June the 15th and was like, yes, here we go, charity shops. Haven't found a single one for like the first week. Couldn't find a single one that was open. Anyway, Caroline and I went out on a mission on Wednesday and we went to Yate Shopping Centre, which is um, probably 15 miles from me. There are nine charity shops in Yate Shopping Centre and there are an, an additional four or five on Chipping Sodbury High Street. So we felt fairly confident famous last words we found one that was open in Yate shopping centre out of the nine and one that was open on Chippers Hobby High Street and then we did find another one that had opened up near me the big Salvation Army one at the top of the road near me is open now so we found that one on the way home however all was not lost I did still get a haul and I thought I would show you guys so we started our day in Chippers Hobby High Street um, I'd had a look on the internet to find out which ones were open, so I knew the great one was. I couldn't find any information about the others. I knew the St Peter's Hospice one wasn't going to be, because their website had said that they'd open, only opened seven of their of their stores in total, and that they were, and they'd said where they were. So I, I already knew in advance the Gate one was, and the Chip and Sobri one wasn't. But yes, yeah, so I'd had a look on the internet. I discovered that the Break one was open. However, we nearly didn't find it because it's not on the main drag of Chip and Sobri High Street. You have to go down and around the bend, and there it is, lurking away at the bottom there. It's a really nice shop. It's a very pretty little shop. Um, it was nice and cool. The lady said they had the front door and the back door open. Nice hand sanitizer station as you went in to make sure that you you know that you went in fresh and whatever. Uh, they had a one way system around, but it was, it was reasonably well spaced. And yeah, no, it was a nice little shop. I really liked it. Everything was sort of clean and fresh and presented well. I bought myself a Radley handbag, which I'm not showing in this video because this is because I didn't buy it to resell. And it's Caroline's fault I bought it. I didn't go out shopping for a new handbag for me, but Caroline made me. <laughs> That was £18, and I wouldn't pay £18 if I was buying to resell, even though it's worth it. But I will pay £18 if I'm buying for myself. So that was my major purchase in that shop. But I also bought these two items. I bought a teapot. It's not just any old teapot. I'm going to hold it closer so that you can have a good look at it. Even then, you don't realise straight away... Because on it, it's just got pictures of teacups and saucers. But it is actually, I'm just going to move that, take the lid off without dropping it, hold it so you can see. It is a Disney Alice in Wonderland teapot. I've only found one in Solds and Completed and that went for about £20. Particular one, this one's by Churchill. And it is, it's a Disney Queen's, you know, licensed one. It has been used. When you look inside, you can see, I don't know if I can get the angle right for the camera. There we go. You can see the tea stain, so it's going to need a nice clean out before it can be uh, before it can be resold. And I'm not 100% sure of the value, but the ladies had only priced it at £4. But yes, I thought I'd give that a try for £4, and hopefully I can turn that 4 into 20 as long as I can get the tea stains out. Now, my mum used to say you pop a sterilising tablet in to your teapot with some water and leave it overnight. So that might be worth trying if I can't get them out with ordinary scrubbing. And then the other item I bought from that charity shop is one of these. This is a stacking set of coffee mugs. These are M&S. Now I buy the M&S stacking mug sets all the time. They always come in these stands. They, um, they're, these are actual coffee cups, but the mug ones have a, a longer base that's, that stacks inside each other. I paid £5 for this set. And I thought it was unusual because they had the saucers with it and I've never seen, like I said, I've seen it in the mugs all the time, but I've never seen the coffee cups with the saucers before. So I'm um, hoping that that will turn it. I usually manage to turn these stacking mug sets. I usually manage to turn 22, 25 out of them. So I'm hoping I can do the same with the coffee cups. Although I do think that coffee cups are less wanted than mugs these days. 
I think most people prefer a mug of coffee. So there might not be as much in it as I'm hoping, but I'm hoping that five will turn into 20 minimum, let's say. It's a nice set anyway, a nice set for a fiver. And that was it, that was it for the brick for the brick charity shop. It was a lovely little shop. Caroline bought some things as well in there. And after that we moved on to Yate. So we moved on then, after leaving Chipping Sobby, we moved on to Yate Shopping Centre, which is where we had high hopes of finding many, many open stores. But although most of the shopping centre was open, most of the large retail chain stores that are there were open. So, you know, New Look and Pandora, Body Shop and, and Yours Clothing and Roman, all, all of the ordinary retail stores, they were all open. Charity shops were not. And I wonder if it's because they have found it more difficult, I suppose, partly because a lot of their volunteer base are going to be older people who are ne not necessarily out and about yet you know um some people are still shielding older people have been you know recommended to stay stay more isolated for their own safety haven't they so I'm, i think huge amounts of volunteers are elderly obviously and also i wonder if it's because of the difficulties of of fitting into the guidelines because the government have said that stock has to be quarantined and various things like that i'm not even sure what all the guidelines are but, um, but yeah, so we were disappointed in that we didn't manage to find very many. But we did find one. After strolling around, we found one open charity shop, which was the St Peter's Hospice. Now, um, I mean, each area tends to have their own hospice, doesn't it? And the Bristol one is St Peter's. And their charity shops are a little bit pricey from a reseller's point of view. I am happy to pay the prices that charity shops ask without haggling, providing I find there's, I feel there's a profit in there. I don't haggle, I don't ask for a reduction unless I think something's damaged and they perhaps haven't noticed that when they priced it. But the St Peter's Hospice doesn't usually leave a lot of margin for, for reselling profits, so I didn't feel very hopeful when I went in there. But as we went in through the door, they had a nice one-way system and a gentleman directing you to make sure that you weren't the kind of muppet that went the wrong way. I'm not saying anything about you, Caroline, not a word. As we went in, the gentleman said, all ladies wear is half price. And, and Caroline and I went, oh, oh. And it was. All the ladies wear was half price, including... Now, St Peter's Hospice always have a higher end rail, so a better brand rail. And I expected that to be absent. I, 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 in my cynical way, I thought that they would have put out all the cheapy stuff. I thought the shelves would be full of Primark and all the rest of it. But there would be no nice stuff. And I was wrong. I'm happy to say I was wrong. I did get one supermarket brand item. This one is two at Sainsbury's, but it is a blatant rip-off of a Jules print. So this one is a size 24, which is a nice size for, for a reselling point of view. And it, it was one ninety nine because I think it was half price that meant I paid a pound for it. And like I said, blatant rip-off of a Jules print, which means I'm fairly confident I'll be able to sell it quite not 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 as by saying it's Jules, but I think people who like that print will be happy to buy that and I only paid a pound. I rest estimate to be able to get seven or eight pounds for that one pound t-shirt. So that was a nice find. That was the first one I picked up. And then I moved on round and I to the trousers I found these. These are Peruna. They're a really nice floral summer trouser, tapered leg, side pockets. Ladies like a pocket. It's not just gentlemen who want pockets, you know. Um, and I think they're a really nice floral print. They were four ninety nine. They're size eighteen. Again, nice big size. Peruna always does okay for me. You know, it's not um, it's always bread and butter. It doesn't, you know, it's not it's not rocket money, but it, it does okay. And because they were four ninety nine down to two pound fifty, I grabbed those, and I think I'll be able to get twelve ninety nine for those. What I will probably do is put them on a fourteen ninety nine with offers, and end up taking twelve. That's my usual. That's my usual. That's my usual. Modus operandi. That's the word I was grasping for. Then I found this. This is East. Now, Caroline says she has sold this very dress before. I can't remember how much she said she got for it. It's a crinkle on the top and a pleated skirt. I think it might be silk. It's a size 16 and it was 5 99 obviously down half price, so I paid three. Oh, it's 100% polyester. 100% finest polyester. But yes, Caroline says she sold it for. I've definitely sold this print from East in a top, in a blouse, but I've never had the dress. So, so that was good for £3. I think I'll probably get a safe 18 to 20 for that one, hopefully. Fingers crossed. Another really pretty one is this one. This is from Evans. I've got it the long way round. This is from Evans, and it's a cocktail-style kind of skater dress with attached belt. 
size 16 would have been 6.99 and obviously half price meant it was 3.50 really pleased with that one i think that will go well people are going to start going out weddings are going to start happening again people are going to want smart outfits it's all coming back people i believe the world is coming back sorry if i got a bit red in the face by the way the heat's starting to get a bit oppressive this one also Peruna and probably also 100% polyester judging by the feel. Let me just check. 100% polyester. Fine, just polyester. This was Peruna, but it's a nice floaty summer skirt. It's lined. It's um, some, you know, it's a nice summery print. It was 3.99 half price down to two quid, so I picked that one up. And that, that is a size 20. So again, a nice large size. I don't only buy bigger sizes, um, but I do know that I have a lot of success selling bigger sizes. I think smaller sizes, average sizes, 12, 14s, even 16s are available in so many shops and so many brands that the market is flooded. And, and ladies of that size can usually shop fairly budget friendly you know what i mean you can usually find somewhere that's fairly inexpensive that will have your size once you get up to the bigger sizes it is more difficult to find places that will have your size and certainly more expensive so i think that's why the second hand market is strong for larger plus size clothing so i don't only pick up plus size but i do do well out of it this is what is this this is together now um caroline and i were discussing this we think it's a catalogue brand i can't remember which catalogue she thinks she said, think i think she said she thought it might be little woods it's definitely a catalogue brand and it's just a basic dress with a have i got it back to front again no i've got it right around it's got a ruched belt thing across the back there for detail and a cross panel front and that was 4.99 down to 2.50 and it's a size 24 so again with the plus size and hoping that that will go well and again with the hoping weddings kick up and people start wanting nice dresses to wear for a wedding last clothing item from that store hoping this will prove to be a real money spinner this is oscar now i so i was talking to caroline about it after i bought it it's a long linen um, sea green linen dress big side pockets 100% linen, nice condition. I was talking to Caroline after I bought it and saying to her that I've had my fingers burned with Oscar before. She said, how do you mean? I said, well, I bought Oscar trousers that I paid more for because they were Oscar and they hung around forever. I think, don't think I ever sold them. I, think I might still have them. But this one I felt safe with because it's linen. It's summer, it's hot weather. Linen's always nice because it's a dress. I think I would still steer away from Oscar trousers in future unless they were the balloon ones, which always go well. It was 7 99 which I would have considered paying normally for Oscar. So to have a half price for four made it a real bargain. So I feel quite safe with that one. I think Caroline said that she would estimate 40 to 50 on that one. I might check with her before I list it because I think I underprice some things. I think I under undervalue my own pickings, so to speak. Last item from that store, that was the last clothing item I showed, and then I also bought this. This is from the Bombay Satchel Company, and I bought it because it's a really nice retro print kind of 70s style canvas satchel. I didn't realise when I bought it that there is this quite unpleasant watermark stain all across the back. And to be honest, I wouldn't have picked it up if I had noticed that. However, I'm hoping I can get it out. I might just try and put it through the washing machine because it's a good, it's a well-made thing. It's got a decent lining. I think it might go through the washing machine on a cool wash. I think I'm going to, it was, it was 3 dollars if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. It won't be the end of the world. I think I'm going to spray that with some stain spray and leave it for an hour or so. And then pop it in the washing machine on a cool wash and see what happens. If worse comes to the worst and it, and it gets ruined, I've lost 3 99 That's not the end of the world. It's not a huge seller either. I might get 10 or 12 for it. But I thought it was nice. I thought I liked the retro print. And finally, from the last charity shop of the day, which was the Salvation Army one near to my home, I got these bits. This one is... Um, as a general rule overpriced and under exciting it seems to sell generally a real load of rubbish you know rubbish, too rubbish even for resellers to resell and we, we know I'm, I'm hashtag call merch I'm all about the tat but too tat even for me um, but it's also really overpriced for what it sells as well so I don't usually go in there feeling very hopeful but I did do okay this time I got this Harry Potter rabbit 3D jigsaw puzzle. I'm really, really hoping all the pieces are there. 
Um, this is not one that I can get mum to build for me to find out. These are the foam, can you see how thick that is? They're foam pieces and it builds up into a 3D, 3D jig. So this one is the Hogwarts Astronomy Tower. So I'm really hoping all the bits are there. I might have to sit and count that one and just hope. I'm really hoping all the bits are there. I might have to sit and count that one because I don't think mum will enjoy doing that one. I can't see her enjoy doing a 3D one. That was £4 and completed and sold listings imply that I should be able to get 25 to 30 for that one. So that was a nice little pickup, providing all the bits are there. So that was my uh, first item in the last shop. Excuse the dogs in the background, by the way, they're over the field yelling at each other. Um, I also picked up a, whilst on a Harry Potter theme, a copy of the Philosophers, 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 Philosopher's Stone, Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone on DVD. I um, usually, often do Harry Potter bundles, but for a long time, I, the only ones I've actually needed to complete bundles are Philosopher's Stone. So I picked up one of those. That one was, I believe, 99p. I might be wrong, but I it might have been 50p. But I believe it was 99p. I've got my receipt somewhere, obviously. Somewhere. Two mugs. Now, I know I'm not supposed to be buying mugs. But I've sold these in the past and they've done reasonably well for me before. So these were, I think they were a pound each. For some reason, she, they had little price stickers on. She's taken them off. I think they were a pound each. Oh, no, she hasn't taken them off. I'm lying. There it is. Look, green price sticker on the side. Definitely a pound. I'm going to take it off now because if I missed it then. Oh, get the sticky stuff removed on that. This is, these are the Born to Shop. Um, oh, actually, this one isn't. I thought this was from the Born to Shop range, which I've sold quite well, but this one is actually History and Heraldry. Now, there you go. That one's a surprise. Just shows. Don't listen to eBay resellers who do YouTube videos. They don't know what they're talking about. Either way, I still feel fairly sure I'll be able to sell it. It says, my job is secure. Nobody wants it. And, oh, it's got a little logo on the inside as well. Look, that's quite nice. It says it's only a job. So, yeah, I didn't realise that that was a different range. Just goes to show. Don't know what I'm talking about most of the time. This one is the Born to Shop range. Well, if I hold the two up together, you'll see why I why I fell down that mistakey hole. Because they're very, very similar designs. This is plainly a rip-off design. This is the Born to Shop one. This was also a pound. This one is, there's nothing better than a good friend except a good friend with chocolate. And I've sold these reasonably successfully for eight or nine pounds more than once. It's another sticker that didn't peel very well. Why do they use unpeely stickers? So yeah, so a pound each for those two. And they should, they should bring me in a good... I would say a safe estimate would, 50, would be £15 for the pair. I won't sell them as a pair, but, you know, £15 between them. Final thing, and the final thing of today's haul is this. Now, this is a funny little thing. This is a cardboard, can you get a cardboard desk tidy. It comes with free dust. Look, it's going to have to have a nice little hoover out. And it caught my eye from across the shop, and it was in a section that they'd kind of roped off. So they had an area where they turned all the furniture, because it's a big Salvation Army store, it sells furniture as well as as well as smaller stuff. And they turned the furniture around all to face inwards so they got an area blocked off of stuff they hadn't sorted. And this was on the shelf in that area, but it was only just inside the area, so I was able to reach across and get it. And it was priced over 50p, so it wasn't like I'd taken stock that they hadn't priced yet. And I picked it up because I thought it might be on a Bridgewater. Although it doesn't say Emma Bridgewater on it, on the bottom it says Matthew Rice made in England. Anyway, got it home, turns out it is Emma Bridgewater, and there is one on completed and sold that has gone for £27. This cost me 50p. So that might well turn out to be today's bargain of the day. It's got a little bit of a nick there. I'm just peering at that over the top of the glass. A bit, a little bit of a nick there. It looks almost like somebody might have nibbled it. Children, probably. But yeah, it's a, it's a nice little storage box. And um, slightly bigger than a CD, if you're wondering how large. Slightly, yeah, slightly bigger than a CD. And, uh, yeah, £27 will do me out of 50p. That's everything. Thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I don't often do charity shop hauls anymore. Um, I don't often do charity shop sourcing. I always go in, but I very rarely buy more than one or two bits at a time. Um, I think I bought more today because of finding the half price rail in the St Peter's Hospice. And also, I think because I was with Carolina, because we were on a sourcing trip, and I wanted to get some stuff, so I think perhaps I was a little bit more open-minded towards spending. Because I'm, I'm 
tend to not want to spend my money in the charity shops, tend to want to hang on to my money and spend it in the car boot sale because I feel like I get more for my money at the car boot sale than I do at the charity shop. I always feel like, you know, I can get pound of 50p prices at the car boot sale. But the prices weren't bad um, Wednesday. I think I did reasonably well price-wise, especially the half-price clothes. The ceramic stuff may be a little bit overpriced, but we'll find out, won't we? And uh, yeah, so that's it. Thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Do feel free to comment below. Um, give me a like. Um, if you're not already subscribed and you'd like to see more from me, do hit the subscribe button. I do charity shop hauls. I do car boot sale videos on a Sunday. I do home bargains hauls. I do various, you know, stuff around the home. I do all sorts of random stuff. Random stuff on my channel. And I would love to have you as a subscriber if you're not already subbed up. That sounds weird. And with all that said... I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.